Jerry Mallory here, SBNationPrivateTroit.com. Finally, the Lions regular season is here. We've waited so long. We gave you the NFL preview, gave you your MVPs, your Super Bowl champions, etc., etc. But our heart and soul lies with the Honolulu Blue and Silver. That's why you go to Private Detroit, because we love our Lions. So it's time to take a look at their season, and then we'll wrap up this video previewing their Game 1 matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, if I had to sum up this season in three words, in terms of my expectations, it would be this. Prove me wrong. That's right. I need this team to prove me wrong. I say this because it's not that I think they're going to be horrible, that they're going to only win four games or five games similar to last year. No, this is a better team. They've addressed some glaring needs. However, when you look at the schedule, when you look at some of the deficiencies, to me, the offensive line and the linebacking core, again, when you look at the schedule, this thing could be difficult for them. The road ahead is going to be tough. I might even go so far as to say this team might be more talented on paper than the team that won 10 games in 2011. That does not mean I think they're going to win 10 games this year, though. I'll give you a scary statistic. The last two years, the Lions, against teams that ended up the season over 500, they won one game the last two years. That's right. They went 1-13 against teams that were over 500 at the end of the year. Simply put, they beat the teams that they're supposed to, but the better teams, those that win 9, 10, or more games, they have not found the victory that often. Only one time. So, looking at this year's schedule, we know things can change. Teams that are good, one year could be bad the next. But just looking at this schedule, we're slated to face 10 teams that in 2012 were over 500. Again, 1-13 against plus 500 teams the last two years. Potentially 10 teams that the previous year were over 500 more than likely will be at or around 500 this year. You add two more teams, the Cowboys and the Steelers, who were 8-8. Eight eight. They were at 500. So 12 out of the 16 games this year will be against teams that the previous year were 8-8 eight eight or better. That's why I'm saying this. Prove me wrong. Let's take a quick look at some of our predictions. We'll talk about the offense, defense, special teams. Then we'll come back and preview game one. Spotlighting the offense, we have to look at Matt Stafford first. He's our quarterback, the franchise. The future rests on his arms. So what are we going to get? Will we see the 2011 Stafford where he was great or the 2012 Stafford where he was anything but excellent? So just having fun with numbers, if we kind of averaged out his last two seasons, we're going to predict this to be his outcome for 2013. Averaging out the two years, Stafford would end up this year with 31 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, throw for 5,001 yards, have a QB rating of 88, and complete 61.5% of his passes. That's a step in the right direction. That isn't quite elite, but that gets him a little bit closer to earning the, all the money he's now making. And if he can produce that from us this year, I think that puts us in a good position to challenge for a wild card spot. Now, looking at the run game, I think it will struggle once again this year, but be better than last year. I say that for two reasons. Number one, I think the personnel has improved. You add Reggie Bush, you give Joy Bell more playing time. Hopefully, Larry Warford, as the season progresses, becomes that dominant run blocker that we think he can become that mauler. And because of that, the run game will see improvements. But if the preseason showed us anything, it's that we still don't have a very good blocking offensive line. So no matter who's behind there, they will struggle. However, Reggie Bush should have plenty of production. Don't worry, this guy is going to do a lot catching and rushing. If I had to predict, he's going to have about 750 rushing yards, five touchdowns in that area. But his key is going to be in receiving. A ton of balls will be thrown his way. He'll probably haul in 70 to 75 catches for 700 plus yards and four touchdowns and I think Joyke Bell will add 450 to 500 rushing yards himself. Calvin is Calvin. He's going to be dominant. He's in his prime. He's the best. Only thing that can stop him is an injury. We don't want to see that happen and you know Calvin's going to be the best. He's the best in the game at wide receiver and he should be just as good potentially not seeing as many double teams because Reggie Bush is there and even if the numbers aren't as gaudy as uh, the ton of interceptions, or rather touchdowns he got in 2011, or and not as gaudy as the record-breaking in yards, he will still be productive, he will still be an all-pro, and he'll still be Megatron. Looking at the defense, this defensive line should be absolutely dominant. 
I'm looking for Endomic and Sue and Nick Fairley both to make the Pro Bowl. I think they'll combine for 16 and a half sacks. So you can divvy that up any way you want. One gets eight, one gets eight and a half, one gets seven, one gets nine and a half. 16 and a half sacks between two defensive tackles. And Ezekiel Ansah could very well be the defensive rookie of the year. And I look for him to get double digit sacks probably at exactly 10. Last year. The number one team as far as taking down the quarterback. There were two teams. It was Denver Broncos and the St. Louis Rams. They both got 52.5 sacks. I'm looking for the Lions to be number one in that category this year. Eclipsing that mark and getting about 55 quarterback takedowns. I think this is the key for this team. No matter how good they do or no matter how far they go. I think we'll look back and say it was because of the defensive line being so dominant. They absolutely win several games for us this year. In terms of struggling, the linebackers, this is an area that I've been concerned with. I think the outside linebackers are okay. Not a ton of playmakers, not a ton of uh, sacks, not a ton of interceptions. So they're going to struggle a little bit. And we'll be talking about that linebacking core, wishing we can upgrade it uh, the following year. But overall, this will be another opportunistic defense. More similar to what we saw in 2011, getting after the ball, getting interceptions from the secondary. And, uh, you know, just seizing those moments, which will put us in games and win a couple for us. Last but not least is special teams. Uh, it's a kerfuffle. It's uh, a conundrum, whatever confusing word you want to use when it comes to the returner. Who is it going to be? Stephen Miller. Is it going to be Joy Bell on occasion? Patrick Edwards? Michael Spurlock? We know who it's not going to be. And that's Stefan Logan. And because of that and that alone, we should see improvements in the return area. But the biggest issue with this team and the special teams was really their coverage units. Awful. New coach, the Boomerang Bombonero man is coming in, shoring them up. If Montel Owens can get back, you know, we have the usual suspects as well. John Wendling, will Ashley Palmer still play a big role in special teams now that he's possibly starting? It's a possibility he does both. Overall, the coverage unit has to be better. It lost us two games. Last year against Minnesota, last year against the Tennessee Titans, we probably win those two games if it was not for the return touchdowns that we gave up. So when we show up that area, that should help us. Maybe it won't win us a ton of games, but we don't hope it loses us any games this year. In terms of kicking, Sam Martin is a legit punter. We've had no names. We've had journeyman guys that come in and just not help us with field position at all. He should help. And then David Akers is here. He has the experience. And a lot of days we're going to look at him and say we can't tell the difference between him and Jason Hansen. So that's always a plus when we can compare any player to someone that may be a Hall of Famer at the kicker position. It all hinges on Akers being healthy. That was his excuse for being inaccurate. So we'll see what happens this year. But overall, the special teams should experience a vast improvement in all facets of that side of the ball. When it's all said and done, I'm not going to go game by game. I think this team will end up 8-8. Eight and eight. I know that's boring. Eight wins, eight losses. What does that mean for Jim Schwartz? Does he keep his job? Martin Mayhew. Will we have definitive answers about Stafford? I don't have all the answers. I don't have any answers. But in my opinion, and even to go 8-8, eight and eight, they're going to have to beat some good teams this year. I think they will. They've improved in a lot of areas. I think the addition of Reggie Bush should not be overlooked. This team with Javid Best gave an element to this offense that we have not seen since Javid left with the concussions. We were 5-0 before he got hurt, and since then, we've lost. And we've, you know, we made the playoffs that year, but the offense has not clicked. Reggie Bush brings us that element. The maturation of the defensive line, adding Ezekiel Ansah, Jason Jones, uh, Willie Young. This team, to me, will beat some of those 500-plus teams this year. So that's why I'm saying 8-8. Eight and eight, just on the outside looking in, not quite making the playoffs. Now, again, if they prove me wrong, I'll be elated. Go ahead and win 10 games. Win the division. Nothing would surprise me. I would be shocked if we won four games again or five, but I can see anywhere from seven to ten wins. I'm saying they're going to go eight and eight. Uh, a lot of turmoil, a lot of change on the roster. Some of those practice squad guys may find their way up uh, and, and make an impact. There are going to be injuries. So, uh, at the end of the day, I think they'll win eight and they'll lose eight. Now, talking about game one, this is one of the must wins in my opinion. They're over 500, but when you're at home, you should have a good chance at beating this division rival in the Minnesota Vikings. That following week against Arizona, these are the type of games they're going to have to win. If they don't, you forget. You can forget about even winning eight games. 
Now, uh, from an injury standpoint, Ezekiel Ansah, fully practiced, he's going to play. On the other end, Kevin Williams, the all-pro defensive tackle for the Vikings, is not going to play. Favor for the Lions. In terms of some matchups, I'm not going deep against the Minnesota Vikings. I really love Harrison Smith. He has size. He's very good at coverage. And even last year, we tried to go deep against him a couple times, and we made, or rather, they made us pay. The Minnesota Vikings did. However, their cornerbacks could be susceptible. So your slants, your intermediate, this is where your Pettigrews and your Reggie Bushes and your Ryan Broyles come into the foray. The Vikings had a great draft last year. When you think about it, Matt Khalil, Harrison Smith, you bring them to uh, those two guys in, they're instant starters. Uh, Khalil, Pro Bowl caliber. Smith, I think, will end up being a Pro Bowler. Last year with us, our top picks, Broyles and Reef, well, they're starters now, but not quite the success that the Vikings had. This year, they had three first-round picks. They used them on some pretty big names, Xavier Rhodes, Cordero Patterson, and Sharif Floyd. Sharif's going to step right in, playing with Kevin Williams, but now playing in place of him because of the injury. Xavier Rhodes, cornerback, lots of promise. Cordero Patterson giving more weapons for Christian Potter. So these are some of the new names. But we know when you're facing Minnesota who you have to worry about. On defense, it's Jared Allen. We hate him. He has uh, all these negative things to say about Detroit. He's brash, but he can play. He can get after your quarterback. Riley Reef, your work's cut out for you. And on offense, obviously, it's Adrian Peterson. A-D-A-P all day. He'll break one open. Remember last year, we held him, we contained him, we contained him, and then he broke one free. It's a team effort. Linebackers, defensive backs, obviously the front four. It's going to have to try to contain him as much as possible, but I think it can be done. This is one of the games I'm predicting us to win. Detroit Lions, 24. Minnesota Vikings, 20. It'll be a close game, but I'm thinking we're going to win this one in front of the home crowd, and I'm just wait. We've been worrying about this offense. The Stafford, I think things are going to start to click. Ryan Boyles is going to look good. Stafford's going to look more accurate. And hope is going to spring eternal, at least for week one. Enjoy it, guys. We've been waiting for this. We're huge Lions fans. I'll be sitting in front of my couch enjoying every single minute of all the action. It's time to party. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. We're going to be out of here. Until next time, we'll be talking about the game as a whole. And... I talked about a surprise, a little announcement. We're going to be bringing back the Pride Detroit podcast. Some of you are familiar with this. This gives us more of an opportunity to talk at length, 20, 30 minutes, breaking down games, breaking down all the little details and the intricacies that makes us hardcore Lions fans. Just wait. It's coming soon. Pride Detroit pod, Pride of Detroit, excuse me, podcast is back. All right, guys, that's it. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Until next time when we'll be hopefully talking about Lions win. This has been Jerry Mallory for SB Nation and PrideDetroit.com.